Well, I can tell you a little bit what our first experiences were when we had determined the first structure by NMR. The first reaction was that it cannot be done. That was the reaction from the side of crystallographers. And this is also documented in writing. So it must be, it must be a modeling using information from crystal structures. The second problem arose because we solved the second structure. Uh, the first structure was bullseminal inhibitor. That's a small, very stable molecule from bull semen. And that, uh, that's just a globular structure. And there were analogs of which the crystal structures had been solved. So the suggestion was that we had uh, used information from these homologs. Second structure we solved was metallocyonein. And it turned out that, unknown to us, the crystal structure had been solved. And the two were completely different. It is so that in metallocyonein you have seven metal lines in a small globular structure of 60 to 62 amino acids. Among these are 20 cysteines. These are amino acids with an SH group in the side chain. And these 20 cysteines would coordinate, bind in coordinatively to those seven metal lines, which means that some cysteines are bound to more than one metal line, so so-called bridging cysteines. And of the 28 metal to amino acid coordinative bonds, 21 were different between the crystal structure and our structure. So journal science got submissions of both structures, decided that the crystallographers must be right because it's an established technique and we must just have blundered. And they published the crystal structure and rejected our structure which was then published in, I think, Journal Molecular Biology. And we then solved two more metallocyonins, which, I mean, the first one was rabbit, then we had the human, and I think, um, I'm not sure now of the third species. They were all identical. It took crystallography six years to redo the structure and find it to be identical to ours. That was the second part of the game. When the first, when this was out, I mean, the criticism that we had used uh, information from homologous structures, and then the problem is the metallocyonin, Robert Huber, who got a Nobel Prize in 1988, for the reaction center. He suggested, let's clean this up. We take one unknown protein and I solve the crystal structure and you solve the NMR structure. Being sure that we couldn't do it. And so we did, and the two structures turned out to be identical. And that uh, gave rise to a very long publication in Journal Molecular Biology, I think 70 pages, with all the details of the NMR structure determination. And then it was resolved. Then there was an editorial comment by Sidney Brenner, who was the chief editor. He said, now we have published a complete description of an NMR structure determination of a protein. We will never again do that. From now on, we will publish notices similar to those for crystal structures. So at that point, it was all set. But you see, it took four years of doubts and, uh, or, and criticism 